Google Stadia is moving on to NVIDIA. And there might be a new NVIDIA card tomorrow, who knows? But also, don't do this to your Steam Deck, if you have one. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Welcome back here on this fine Monday morning. We're gonna start off talking about a fine move, in my opinion, that I believe Stadia might be making with regards to their cloud streaming hardware. In case you don't remember back when Stadia used to be this like embryo of beautiful dreams and wishes that gave birth into the nightmarish hellscape that is Stadia today day uh it was it was supposed to be really good and it was based on amd gpus in fact it's suspected that it runs on the radeon pro v340 hardware which is a vega graphics card gives you 10 teraflops per second was supposed to be better than the playstation 4 10 teraflops is kind of where the playstation 5 is we were expecting 4k gaming we were expecting greatness but what we got was doo-doo. Anyways, there's some new details coming up in Google Stadia stuff showing that there is support coming for NVIDIA hardware, making sure that there's necessary drivers being activated for that. So that's really intriguing in and of itself. AMD kind of had a stranglehold on the entire console market, whether it was cloud streaming or otherwise, and now it looks like NVIDIA might be warming its way in there, which is intriguing considering the fact that they have their own competitive GeForce Now solution, which in my opinion is substantially better. However, the thought is potentially that this is not going to mean that they're going to switch over to NVIDIA hardware right now because that might actually come with game optimization errors and make it worse user experience for the people who actually use Stadia, which I know there's like one of you who watches the show and I'm like offending you right now, but you're the person who plays on Stadia, not me. If you can't be insulted, maybe you should get out of the cloud kitchen. However, one of the thoughts is that since Stadia promised that they were gonna upgrade hardware later on down the line that they would keep up, maybe these NVIDIA GPUs are the next iteration of Stadia or Google and NVIDIA are merging together or this is meaningless and it's just for developers to be able to develop on NVIDIA hardware while they're developing in the cloud for Stadia and make it easier on them for some reason. Who knows? But Stadia, NVIDIA GPU is potentially a match made in matrimony. That was a good one. But what hasn't been good is GPU prices. They've been absolutely abysmal as of late. And so 3D Center has come up with a list price for you to look at and find out whether or not the current prices of GPUs are fair and whether or not you should consider paying less based on its relative performance to the RTX 3070. As you can see here, a lot of the GPUs that Nvidia has come out with are roughly a uh, fair price. The 3060 Ti actually should cost more based on this estimation. The 3060 should cost the same amount and the 3050 should be about $20 cheaper. However, things like the 3090 Ti should be about $1,100 cheaper and the 3090 should be about half the price. However, I will say that this has always been the case and is not necessarily something new with the 30 series that Nvidia's high end is always way more expensive than the increase in performance justifies. That marginal increase that you get on those FPS will cost you substantially more. That is always been the case. NVIDIA always charging more for their flagship product. Uh, th uh, being uh, being over $1,000 more expensive than it should be is a little tough pill to swallow, but it also has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. It's technically a Titan class card. It's it's like, uh, who knows? But the ARC 6000 series is actually a bit fairer price. If you look at all of this, the 6950 XT's fair price is about $200 less than where it is right now. However, in the low end, I, I feel justified. The ARC 6400 should be $107. Amen. Gosh dang, that is a garbage card that I want to be way cheaper. The 6500 XT is about $50 overpriced. Uh, the other lineup is like, it's within a hundred bucks. It's not, it's not terrible. But coming alongside with this, it turns out that because GPUs are actually selling for way less right now, Nvidia has actually stopped making the RTX 3080 12 gig and instead is only shipping out the 10 gig because it's going to be cheaper to make those because they don't have to include two more gigabytes of VRAM and and thereby makes it a, a more cost-effective solution for them. Capitalism wins every time, and we might win, we might lose, but potentially, allegedly, again, the GTX 1630 should come out tomorrow. I know, I know, fanfare, raving, madness in the streets. There's some reports coming out that Colorful is gonna be shipping these out, GTX 1630, June 28th, 
Hopefully, I would like another low end card. We just got the Intel Arc A380 out in China. We need this GTX 1630 to come in and compete with the Arc 6400. I like it. And in case you want to get your first look at the 1630 from Colorful, uh, here it is. This looks like an MSI card from like the GTX 9 series. That's like, I've seen this. But it's got a DVI port. And I'm gonna port on over to crypto stocks. Let's talk about Bitcoin. I'm down 2% on the day to be just over $21,000. Kind of having a mild weekend. Not a ton of movement there. Ethereum roughly the same, down 3% to be at $1,200. Dogecoin, on the other hand, is up nearly 8% to be at 7.4 cents. Elon Musk, something, something, Dogecoin. I'm sure that's the entire reason. I, I don't track why crypto does what it does. It's a random market just like everything else. Anybody who tells you they can predict the market is lying to you, but I can predict that you're gonna enjoy the prices on UFD deals. Reese, bringing you the hottest tech deals on the internet. Thank you, buddy. I got you, fam. We've got one that I am so highly tempted to buy. My flipping goodness, the Aorus 48 inch OLED gaming TV right now is going for $800. That is a substantial saving. If you look at the previous historical price, it's down for 1200 bucks just about a week ago is at 950 and it's currently sitting at $800. This is about $100 cheaper than the LG C1 OLED, which has roughly the same spec sheet as this. That is mighty tempting. I would love to get this for the UFD tech set. I don't know if I could drop 800 bucks, but oh, 120 Hertz OLED 4K 48 inch. Mm. We also got a couple Razer things, the Barracuda X wireless headsets going for 40 bucks right now. The pink ones specifically in case that's your bag. And then also the Razer Orochi V2 going for 35 bucks right now, either in black or white in case you want to pick one of those up for 50% off. In case you want to pick up something for a Tesla, which I, I'm only bringing this up because I I think that Tesla has needed to have this feature for a while and that's enhanced autopilot. It's essentially a step up from the autopilot that they have, but it's not quite the full self-driving. $6,000 now it used to cost two grand and Tesla's absolutely absurd with how much they think this stuff is worth. But the reason this thing needs to exist is because it takes all of the useful features of full self-driving and then gives them to you without having to spend the full price. The, the main things that are the most important for the full self-driving that Tesla gives you is you put on your turn signal and the car changes lanes for you. That's it. That's like, that's the entire thing. But my goodness, when, when we did the cannonball run, having that feature was superb, but I, I just, six grand. 12 grand to get traffic light and stop sign control. I don't know. Tesla. But it's back. It was gone for like years. I'm excited for it. And some people are excited for From Software's latest games because it turns out that there's another unannounced game that is closing in on ending development. This is coming out from From Software's Miziyaki, stating that there is final stages of development going on on an unannounced project. They intend to continue to focus on directing games, and then Elden Ring will also continue to receive updates. This is coming out because in 2018, he gave an interview stating that they were working on three and a half games at that point. So we got Sekiro Shadows Die twice there was a psvr game and then there was elden ring that came out this year that's two and a half games accounted for that third one was never announced but it turns out we might get it sooner rather than later and that's what's turning out to be about the next generation of amd motherboards asrock giving us some details on their x670 e motherboards in case you're curious about that we got the tai chi posted on their whole gosh dang website supporting ryzen 7000 chips you can see the lga socket right there for the actual cpu Supports DDR5 memory, 26 phase power design. Mm, got lightning gaming ports. I love it when Apple and AMD team up. Obviously, that's not what it means. That's like some random marketing term. I would love to have lightning ports for some reason just to piss off PC gamers. That'd be great. And in case you want to piss off your Steam Deck, oh boy, howdy, I got a mod for you. You could take a 2242 SSD and just jam it into the 2230 socket. And according to some people out on the internet, it's going to work totally fine. Look at this picture that's a 2242 fits right on in there so you have to move some cables and some thermal pads in order to get that drive in there uh and it, you know the, the people who came out with this mod said that it would mostly be fine but uh the designer of the steam deck came out and said don't do this the charger ic gets very hot and the thermal pads should not be moved you're gonna affect the lifespan of your steam deck don't do it my friends this is unlike when i've done things like putting a gpu on the steam deck and when i added a raid card to the steam deck as well 
because number one, never do what I do at home. Number two, I, I, I'm dumb. Number three, we added a fan to blow on. So when the IC gets hot, everything's going to be OK. Brilliant. We got we actually have another video coming out this week on like the ultimate Steam Deck setup. I'm very excited for it. Don't do it at home, but you could if you wanted to. It's going to be great. But the post that came out said, uh, you, you know, there's the thermal pad that sits on top of this inductor right here that had to be moved. It should be fine, though. Steam Deck designer saying, nay, it's not going to be fine. But turns out what is fine is delitting the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Somebody came out and actually did it. They took the top off of the 5800X 3D, added a, added a little new thermal paste on in there and got better temperatures for it, showing that there was about a 10 degrees Celsius difference between pre de litting and post de litting making it so that the chip runs cooler, especially with the 3D stacked V-cache. It's actually been a mild concern of these chips that they do run hotter. But one of the things to note is that while de litting, which is the process of taking off the integrated heat spreader on the 5800X 3D did work on Ryzen 7000, less likely to work because it's got all these capacitors around there and you kind of have to like pop that thing off and damage could be high. I mean, I'm not saying nobody's going to do it. There's I mean, there's extreme overclockers out there. There's people gifting the arts a CPU flaying and can make it happen. But uh, you, you're probably not going to want to do it at home, my friends. And you're not going to want to watch me at home. I was going to see do me at home and that's that wasn't going to be right. Anyways, this episode of Hot News is over. I'll see you here tomorrow for more of the hottest tech news on the Internet, my friends. Tuesday.